Hello everybody, and a very happy new year to you all. I hope you've all had a lovely holiday season. The new year is a time of hope, of optimism for the year ahead, so what better game to discuss today than a game I am praying has a successful 2024, The Finals. The Finals shadow dropped a few weeks ago, and I've spent the last few weeks playing the game and having an absolute blast. But before we can predict whether it will survive, we need to actually talk about the game and what it is. So, The Finals is an arena style shooter with two game modes. The first and most strategic game mode is Cash Out. In Cash Out, three teams of three players will compete to secure vaults of money and deliver it to an extraction point. They will then need to defend the extraction point from enemies who will need to steal the Cash Out. If an opposing team manages to steal the Cash Out, they will then need to defend it themselves and the timer does not reset. This means you can defend a cash out for the entirety of its runtime, but if it gets stolen with 5 seconds to go, the team that stole it only need to defend it for 5 seconds. This game mode is also the only mode that is available in tournament and ranked mode. These change slightly in these modes. There becomes 4 teams of 3 players instead, there's a bracket system where each victory puts you into the next round until you get to the final where 2 teams of 3 will face off for the victory. In these modes, you also have limited revive tokens, so the emphasis on knowing when to revive yourself or let your teammate pick you up is crucial, as you could be out for the remainder of the game if you get it wrong. Cash Out provides a much more tactical experience, as a deeper understanding of the game's mechanics is much more crucial than sheer gun skill, which isn't exactly the case for the other game mode, Bank It. In Bank It, four teams of three will face off in a much more chaotic game. Killing enemies drops money. There are also vaults that open up around the map that can give you more money. Once you are in possession of the money, you can travel to a cash out point and deposit your money. Have I said money enough? There's no defending necessary once you put the money in the cash out. It can't be taken from you, it goes onto your score. The game itself, the finals, is also presented as a tournament. There's pre-game graphics that set the scene and commentators describing what's going on in the event as things unfold. It's a really quirky gimmick and it does add a lot of personality to the game. The game features three classes, light, medium and heavy. Each have their own strengths and weaknesses in terms of HP and utility gadgets. Heavies for example can place shields down to protect themselves and objectives, as well as a damn rocket launcher for example or being able to charge through walls. As you'll be able to see from the gameplay, I play as a medium, which has things such as a healing beam and a defibrillator for instant revives, to name just two options, there's a few more, in fact no there's a lot more, there's a bunch of poison mines, explosive mines and things like that. I have found that medium seems to be the most powerful in my experience, but no one class seems that overpowered. Each class also has their own weapons exclusive to them. There's no way to customise the attachments on the weapons, you get what you're given. Each weapon has their own uses of course but with there not being too many options, the medium for example only has 4 weapons to choose from, I assume the others are the same, it won't be too long before a meta develops. But the actual game itself, holy shit is this thing awesome. Multiplayer FPS shooters aren't exactly in short supply, so the finals needs to stand out. The game faces a strong emphasis on strategy, whilst keeping the game fast paced and engaging. The destruction element is key to the game ensuring that no two games really play out the same. There's only 4 maps but I promise you, it does not feel like it. If the cash out point is on a roof for example, it's heavily guarded with mines and turrets and it looks impenetrable, then one option you have is to destroy the building and send everybody and everything crumbling to the ground and take advantage of the resulting chaos. There's also certain carryables around the map you can pick up and throw such as explosive canisters, fire canisters, poison canisters, and goo canisters. Something I would often do is if I was defending a cash out and my teammates were dead, I was the last one alive, but the cash out timer was near the end, I'd throw a poison grenade or something to that effect at the cash out point, meaning that even if I do die, there's another obstacle the enemies will have to overcome in order to take the cash out from us. Your success in the finals will constantly depend on your split second decision making. You're often reacting to what other teams are doing and attempting to counter it on the fly. With four teams usually attacking objectives at once, the likelihood that the same exact scenario will present itself too often is pretty low. 
it's a game about instinct, and the decisions you make in clutch moments will make or break your game, regardless of how well you've played during the match as a whole. The shooting itself is a little bit light. I have played a lot more FPS games with more fluid and weighty shooting mechanics, but they're still fine. I still like them. I don't think that this is an issue at all. The biggest issue I have found with the game is in regards to teammates. I'm not saying this in the sense of just like every teammate I get is bad because that's not the case. I've had a lot of brilliant teammates, but with the teams being made of only three people, it's important that you all work together and contribute equally. Skill level itself is a lesser issue in the sense that there's not really much you can do about that other than play the game. There was a game I played the other day with my friend where me and my friend had 13 kills and our teammate only had two. That is annoying and it can happen in any game, but it's more prevalent in a game like this with three people on the team. If one person, it, it could even be you, you could be the person letting the team down. It, it becomes so much harder to win the game. You can have teammates that run to a different objective from the one that's been marked by the team. At that point, you've lost because as a team of two, it's really difficult to push an objective being held down by three people and multiple other teams of three pushing as well. This goes double for teammates disconnecting. I've spent most of my time in the tournament mode and in that mode, you can't join games partway through, meaning that if a teammate leaves mid game, you're screwed. You've got to, you've only got one of the teammate for the entirety of the game. Solo queue in the finals is a real mixed bag because you just don't know what you're going to get. You can't blame everything on your teammates, but in the finals in particular, team cohesion is really important. And more often than not, a team of solo queuers will get outclassed by a team that's in a party. Multiplayer games especially need to have a fun factor, and this game has it in spades. Arena shooters always excel when the action is virtually non-stop, and this game is exactly that. It's non-stop action all of the time, yet as I mentioned previously, it still manages to retain that strategic element. That's not easy to do. If your team gets wiped, then you're out of action for 25 seconds, but that's it. You spawn in right back in the action, not too far away from any objective. Anybody who's played a battle royale before knows the pain of taking down a team in a hard fought battle, then getting third partied by another team who shows up and acquires the spoils. That does happen in this game and it is still annoying, but it's more often a case of multiple teams attacking each other simultaneously. There's always so much carnage unfolding on the pressure points and a timer ticking down on the objective that everyone just shoots everyone, everybody is in a rush to claim this objective for themselves. When I describe it like this, it sounds mindless, but it's really not. When I've played this game for a couple hours and then come off, I feel a little exhausted from the constant tension, but not in a negative way. More a sense of, wow, that was really something. It's a game that manages to walk the tightrope between team-based tactical shooter and constant dopamine disposal. It's a fine line, and they've meshed it brilliantly. In the modern era though, just being a really fun multiplayer game isn't really enough. You need to have rewarding progression in order to keep interest in your game high. One game that failed at this is Halo Infinite. I really liked the multiplayer of Halo Infinite when it released, but there was zero progression. There was no player level, it was just a battle pass level, which sucked and I did eventually fall off the game because I didn't feel like I was progressing. The finals, I worry also doesn't have enough progression. You do have a level, but only you can see it. I know there are reasons for hiding the player level, but I don't like it. I like being able to compare my level to the people in my game. It's fun, I don't know, I just like it. It gives me a sense of that my progression actually means something, even though it doesn't, and it's completely trivial, it's a personal preference that I really like. Being able to earn cool cosmetics in multiplayer games is the bread and butter, especially since in this game, you essentially can unlock whatever utility or weapons that you want, whenever you want, as long as you have enough in-game currency, which is really easy to earn. You can't really get cool cosmetics in this game without buying a bundle or the battle pass with real money. The finals is free, so they need to make money somehow. But this really sucks in the sense that there is literally no option for any form of cosmetic unless you buy the battle pass or a bundle. Of course, put the cool stuff behind the battle pass or whatever, but there has to be something for you to unlock if you're not paying any money. Every cosmetic is locked behind the battle pass, and it means that for players like me at the moment, for example, as I haven't purchased any battle pass, I am literally playing this game for fun and fun alone, which sounds really dumb when you say it out loud, 
because that is why we play games and I'm not complaining about that specifically. That is why I am playing the game. I am having fun. I am going to keep playing it. But it would be nice if it felt as though I was working towards something. There is a ranked mode and I think this game does suit a ranked mode really well. But I feel it's too early in the life cycle to predict whether it will acquire a hardcore fan base or whether players will gravitate more to the casual modes instead. I think long term progression is an issue that this game will have in the coming months and one that needs to be addressed. I've reviewed a few multiplayer games on the channel, the likes of Hunt Showdown, Exo Primal, Insurgency Sandstorm for example, and a lot of these multiplayer games I have reviewed ended up failing to reach the heights that they could have and a lot of that is due to a lack of new content. The finals has 4 maps, 4 weapons per class and 3 classes. It's not enough long term. The game just came out so it's enough for now, but if Embark don't continually update this game with new content, it's not going to last. And that would be an enormous shame, as this game has something. It's always fun. It's always tactical. There's always something cool happening. The game could be something really special, but it does need new content, and it needs more meaningful progression. That's the sticker for me. It needs more progression. It's the start of the year. I'm going to be positive, and I'm hoping that this game does find a core fan base, because I know that I will be there. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. I hope that you did enjoy it. What did you think of the final so far if you've been playing it? Please let me know in the comments and I will be sure to take a look. But for now, that is all from me. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider leaving a like because that would greatly help me out. And if you want to see more videos from me, then you could always subscribe because I upload every single week. But that is all for now. Have a nice day and goodbye. Just like that, a new vault has appeared.